the dissatisfaction you feel is the gap between where you are and where you want to be, right? And there's two ways of solving this. Either you could like move from where you are a lot, a lot, a lot, and like keep pushing and and reach where you want to be. And maybe by then the goalpost of where you want to be would have moved and so you keep moving, yeah. right? But there's always this gap and this gap is dissatisfaction. The other way of doing it is to not want that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it should just be like, I just want this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? And you can keep going. But at least the goalpost and you are actually at the same place. So the amount of dissatisfaction you feel or the amount that you feel like, oh, I've not done this, I've not done this. Like, why are you thinking about this? You can still keep moving. You can still keep doing things. Work hard. I'm not saying don't do that. Yeah. But if you just want to reach there, go there. But you don't need the goalpost to be there. Like you can just keep the goalpost here and always be happy with what you're doing and like keep doing more things. Hey everyone and welcome back to the show. That was Manik De Silva. He is an illustrator, designer and recently a podcaster too. This entire episode is a laugh riot. This is the most I've laughed on the show till date. And throughout the entire episode, we just kept cracking jokes and talking about things that are a little whimsical. But uh, having said that, there's a lot to learn from and a lot to uncover from as well. We talk about his journey, how he got here, uh, how one can find satisfaction and how putting pressure on yourself is just something that people are getting accustomed to and how one should simply look at lowering the bar to find mental satisfaction. We also talk about the non-maximalist approach, uh, how one can do little but well and ensure that they're happy. We also go into some talks and insights around his podcast with Kanan Gill. So stick around for that as well. But before we get into the episode though, are you enjoying the show so far? Is this something that you're looking forward to every week? If so, there are a couple of things you can do to support the show and it only takes a few seconds. You could either just share the episode or the show with your family or friends, anyone who you feel could benefit from listening or watching the episodes. Or if you do have an iOS device or an Apple device, then the simplest thing you can do is just leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. It's a simple way to get the word out there and when people tune into the show or take a look at the ratings and reviews, it gives them the reassurance that the show is of good quality and it's something that could benefit them. Now, if you don't have either an iOS device or an Apple device or you don't want to talk to your family or friends, then what you can simply do is share the link of the episode, either the audio or the video version, depending on where you're tuning in, on WhatsApp stories. It's a very simple way to get the word out there and the fact that the link is clickable on WhatsApp stories is a very simple way to share and spread the word. All right, without further ado, let's get right into the show. This is episode 16 with Manik De Silva. I'm super glad that you made some time to get awesome, here. Awesome, 100%. And uh, I think we can discuss a lot of things. And we had, awesome. uh, I think we laughed more than we spoke <laughs> on the call. Yes. <laughs> and a sign that, of a great conversation <laughs> is fewer words, more laughter. <laughs> and I think that's how it's going to be as well. That's awesome. Uh, but that's great, dude. So I uh, think the way I normally go about it with my guests mm. is we first... Uh, Talk about their journey. Sure. Uh, talk about how they got here. Yeah. And uh, then we can dive a little deep into a couple of topics that are close to your heart. Sure. Things that, you know, people don't necessarily don't talk about. And uh, yeah, let's take it from there. Awesome. But before we do all of that, uh, if you could just introduce yourself. You're for talking people like this because the cameras are running. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to go to like, through. like, yeah, no, it's great. Yeah, no, I've got, yeah, I've got, yeah. I've got to get, you know, it's from the it's, gut. <laughs> no, no, they say speak from the, yeah. speak from the stomach. Speak, yeah, that's, I'm yeah. speaking from my feet. Currently, I'm speaking <laughs> from my ears, yes. I think. Yeah. <laughs> got, to, got to lower it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Carry on. Sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> Mine's coming from my feet. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, just uh, you know, force okay. of habit. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Okay, so great. for people who don't know you, yeah, if you can just maybe introduce yourself mm-hmm. and uh, talk about what you're doing right now, yeah, it'll probably help. Uh, so I'm Manik De Silva. Paul is my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows that. <laughs> so this is a useless piece of information. But I'm a illustrator, designer, uh, writer, and I like uh, making little products uh, as well. So I do client work balanced with uh, my own things. Okay. Where I prioritize the my own things over client work all the time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, journey, yeah. I'm not. Ju- I mean, uh, you can just talk about maybe things that you're doing currently a little more. Okay. So currently, I'm uh, illustrating a children's book for a client. I am uh, working with uh, a couple of brands on graphic design, and I am also uh, creating a board game of uh, my own. Wow. Yeah. Dude, what's the plan? I mean, how do you get around to doing that and how do you market it or get the word out? I guess, just we'll see. Just, <laughs> I guess we'll see. Who knows? In the next episode, I'll have to YouTube <laughs> how to market board games. We'll yeah. see. But the next episode, the next time you're here, you'll be, you know, sitting Let's down. Let's play, dude. Yeah. <laughs> but that's crazy, dude. You're the first yeah. person I know who's trying to invent. Need a board game. Yeah. Yeah. No, so this was, this was a, it was a great, like, project because I, I've always loved playing them. But making them requires a little bit of different study and thinking and all that. Yeah. Uh, and so and so we we used to sit at like hotels, uh, three friends, and just play. And I started with like just a concept yeah. in my head, yeah. and I like cut out paper and I like and I scribbled and all that, and like made like little cones as pieces and all that. Yeah. And I was like, the game has to be fun when it looks like shit. <laughs> Because yeah, I'm an artist, I'm a designer. I can yeah. make it look good. That's right. never going to be the problem. It needs to be fun even when it's like, <laughs> what is this crap? And then it's fun. Yeah. That's when you know the game is fun. Right. right. So just a little tip for all those people designing, for those like three people in the world designing board games. <laughs> Including so yourself. Quick tip. <laughs> but yeah, that's, dude, that's crazy talk. So, yeah. But how did you, I mean, why did that come up? Were you like discussing this with someone or you just realized you needed to create something like this of your own or um, is it because you don't see too many new board games nowadays? Yeah, it's, I mean, there are actually a lot of new board games these days, uh, which is good, which is yeah. fun. Yeah. This is really making a comeback to just general society. Yeah, um, being social the right yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, being social the right way. And everyone has been uh, telling me to make like a digital component for this game and I'm like no that is the, that is the enemy that's what we are doing this for do not do that yeah <laughs> if I make this digital What's I'm, the point? I'm on the dark side I might as well like put on like Darth Vader's mask you know and just be <laughs> one of the Siths yeah um, so um, so board game the intention was to make things that we can play socially no digital yeah just pure fun right wow yeah and what's the uh, concept uh, the concept if, if you can you know talk about it now. i think i might as well okay <laughs> um but because if anyone's that good at making board games that they like beat me to it and <laughs> the other two people <laughs> make the other two people don't steal my idea guys so the concept came about when I was talking to a friend and I was telling her that, you know, there's many ways you can make a game. And I was like, you can start with the um, uh, <laughs> components and the mechanics of the game and then you can find a theme or a story to build that around. Or you can go the other way. You can think of some shitty story like <laughs> Traffic, the game. And I was like, so Bangalore. Maybe <laughs> I can actually make... <laughs> A traffic related game. And so then I started thinking of it seriously because it started as a joke. And I was like, yeah, but well, you can like all race to different parts of a city, but like block each other and and uh, try and get ahead of each other and try and like uh, make each other player go further and take deviations and like all sorts of like horrible things keep what? happening in this horrible city. <laughs> but you really just have to go there. Like that's, that's all you really need to do. But like, all sorts of crazy shit keeps happening on the way there. Yeah. Which is... So now that's the game. So now the game is called This City Sucks. And now it's like, it's just a map. And uh, each player has three cars. And then they go to different destinations with those cars. And and you have all sorts of powers of like, like bombing other people's cars. Oh, and wow. like doing all sorts of... Like, yeah, I sort of escalated the traffic <laughs> thing a bit. I know you were thinking like... 
that's gonna be speed breaker or something. No, it now there's like speed monsters. Bombers. There's like monsters that come Ooh. and like block traffic, and it's just it's escalated a bit. But it is real life, dude. As you know it. Shit, that's like yeah. coke for Bangaloreans, dude. It's <laughs> like it, so. Whenever I say the name of the the game and I say this city sucks, and they're like, which city is this based on? And I'm like. Particular city. <laughs> Just I've lived here most of my life, but it could be any city. And Who then there's Lingrajpuram yeah. there, and it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's very clearly. <laughs> oh shit! I mean, the fact that you said yeah. traffic itself. Yeah. I think it it is a giveaway there itself, mm, right? Unfortunately. But, Damn, dude! But that's crazy talk. This is the first there's time. There's like <laughs> portals and all, so you can like disappear into one place of the city and come dude, up in other parts of the city and me. like. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's uh, that's the game. It's a fantasy based dr- traffic <laughs> game. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> that's epic. Yeah, so when's when the good. game out? So I wrote to a lot of publishers and they were like this is so weird. We love it. <laughs> um but you know these these board game publishers because it's such a like famous industry, they are all like Full up with their games till twenty twenty two and all. I'm like, who yeah. plans so much in advance, dude? I don't know what yeah. I'm eating for dinner or something. Like, why are you planning twenty twenty one and all? Yeah. Um. So, so I decided I'll do it on my own. So okay. I'm just like figuring things out, and probably next year I'll do it on my own. Dude, that's epic. Yeah. Dude, that I I can't. I mean, I can't. I don't know. I'm just like so. It's so surprising because. Uh, it's so relatable to yeah, us like yeah. especially now where people need to sit down and you know maybe yeah. have a conversation or yeah, a yeah. cup of coffee and play a board game so my wife and i at least my wife's into a lot of board and card oh, games awesome. and all of that yeah. so now off late i've also been you know slowly pulled into it Beautiful. and it's it's great Yo, let's play think, next time yeah Whenever. like while we have an episode while we yeah. have an episode or not we yeah just you just play yeah <laughs> i mean have you gotten past that initial hurdle oh yeah now it's a fully produced oh, okay. game and all this full <laughs> art and like 3d printed like models and monsters oh, and everything oh, is like there shit you've got the creative touch to it It's all there. Shit, I mean, I'll redo parts of it. It's yeah. still in testing phases, but yeah, it's yeah. there. It's uh, like you won't know. It's a fully like it looks <laughs> like you bought it in a shop. Basically. Dude, epic! Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I will definitely take you up on that. Hundred percent. Cool, dude. Yeah. So, dude, this is probably the most interesting <laughs> intro <laughs> I've had on the show. <laughs> And so, my name is Manik De Silva. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. summary, <laughs> I And this is my board game. <laughs> forgotten what the question was, yeah. but hopefully that answered it. Cool, dude. So, uh, yeah. So now let's go and get it a little bit into the yeah. journey. So, mm. um, how did you get here? And we'll obviously talk about a few more things that you're Uber, doing. Uber man, Uber. The yeah. the the magic of technology these days. Uber is how I got here. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is the. This goes back to. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why Uber. I th- I I thought you're trying to like uh, you know go for synonym no, for no. super. <laughs> oh, like that? No. <laughs> Shit. But yeah. yeah, this this goes back to what we spoke yeah, about the register thing, about, right? Yeah. 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 But yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> so how did I get here? Um, I drew a lot as a kid, right? I watched a lot of cartoons and I drew a lot, and I drew from people's. Tiffin boxes and pencil boxes, because that is where the main art is. You know, people think the art is in like galleries and all. Not true. <laughs> If you want to learn art, you look at people's tiffin boxes, Dragon Ball Z tiffin boxes, and their Tom and Jerry pencil boxes, and you're like, I wonder if I can draw yeah, that. So you know, cool. yeah. <laughs> When you're like that small, yeah. Uh, and so I just kept doing that. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty good at this. And then uh, slowly, more and more people, except for me, started saying, ah. Pretty good at this, yeah. <laughs> and then like if you convince a, 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 enough people to be like, uh, yeah, okay, pretty, yeah, yeah, good at this, okay, yeah. <laughs> then like you can keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I kept doing that for a quite a while, and I went. This is school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, through school, uh, except also through school, I I went through like a horror phase. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't cute anymore. It was like terrifying, like beasts and ripped apart limbs and stuff like that. So oh. my art teachers weren't very happy with that. They weren't mm. super kicked about it. Yeah, uh, they were like, draw uh, a greeting card, and I did a Halloween greeting exactly. card. Exactly. I was going to say it's Halloween. Where the, the where the each of the Halloween was a guillotine that had like chopped off somebody's head, and the head had rolled and become the Owen Halloween. 
and this is like in fifth standard or something. And they were like, "What is wrong with this kid? <laughs> is this person insane?" I'm like, yo, you're gonna handle some gore. That is sorry. What kind of an adult are you? Yeah, what kind of adult are you? <laughs> All of us are fine with it. <laughs> grow up. It's just a greeting card. <laughs> thought you'd be happy yeah, it took you back to the 16th century look at the guillotine <laughs> so i went through that sort of phase during school so i had my like early cartoony phase and then my like later horror phase and then slowly these started like joining okay so uh, over time i started liking the combinations of these things of these genres right. right that are have you seen the movie cabin in the woods yeah yeah it's the freaking it's it's like my favorite movie one off okay because it technically is a horror movie yeah <laughs> should be yeah. i guess <laughs> but then it becomes but a comedy <laughs> it's throughout it's just so ridiculous like everything is just what is even happening you're so and confused right yeah. when you're watching it and i love it so that combination is just my favorite you know tarantino also has a bit of this like horrific it's yeah. like com- comedic but also at the same time you're like this is yeah so do i laugh like, or cry yeah, or I'm not sure <laughs> that vibe i love it Right. So like slowly I've also started like developing into that style a bit. Got it. Right. Got and it. then um I went to do college at uh Chitrakala Parishad which is a fine arts college. Um well actually before that I think I was telling you on the phone that I was I was trying to find which field do I draw in like I'm good at drawing so should I do architecture? Yeah. <laughs> Cuz that's the only field that has drawing. That I know in of it. Draw, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and then sooner or later i realized that actually drawing is a field yeah. and you can just, in itself you yeah. can just do that you yeah. don't need to pretend to draw buildings <laughs> and then draw <laughs> a guillotine <laughs> on a house yeah <laughs> because if i became an architect <laughs> all the windows <laughs> all the windows would have like secret guillotines <laughs> we won't tell the residents it's just a house go up <laughs> we'll just say there's one rule in this apartment you don't stick your head out of the window no matter what <laughs> and they'll be like this landlord card this architect can't tell us what to do and then one day they'll say, it's like it's love it's a lovely day we're going to just lean out of our windows rebel against the architect <laughs> and then we just need to find a new person to stay there it's, it's a new whole person a new yeah it's like the capitated people can't Shit. pay rent <laughs> so So I'm glad I didn't become an architect because this so is everyone yeah, else and so society is <laughs> so is everyone else. Um but so I ended up going to Chitrakala Parishad which is a fine arts college and I did like painting and sculpture and all these fun things and like and I realized that printing was like a a subject because the first time I heard it I was like guys you can't be serious. Yeah. Like not that is a power button yeah. and then you like from your phone you say print and then it's printed right. And then it was like oh no this is like they are actually doing it themselves. Yeah. Okay okay cool. I thought like who would learn yeah. printing for boys guys. Yeah, you just go to like, a shop and you pay that guy. That many cartridges that you can put in this machine. So um so yeah so there's printing and there's sculpture and this painting and there's all sorts of these things yeah. and um, it was nice it was nice going through so you explored of, all of these yeah so it, how it works is you pick one specialization and you get to do secondaries or whatever you want yeah yeah right uh, so painting was my main main uh, subject and then sculpture and printing and whatever everything else art history all that stuff was side stuff yeah. side base um and then what i realized is that they are very traditional in their approach yeah so the day that i brought a digital art piece to class the entire institution <laughs> their hopes and dreams and everything that they built up for all these like years yeah. just came crumbling down and they were like what is this <laughs> what have you done <laughs> It's like it's like, the the church. <laughs> it's like the church meeting us in our and it's like my child <laughs> you have been led astray <laughs> it's like come come on man this is just a digital yeah. this is a digital art piece i drew it like if it's any consolation i didn't like take a photograph and click like photoshop sketch filter or whatever like this i i get it yeah, i drew yeah, it yeah i just drew it on like a, a computer yeah 
So that so was what, what? What medium was this? How did you did you bring so it? So you get like pen tablets and stuff like that. Right, so right. so that was that was about ten years ago. Okay. That I bought a pen tablet, and I was like, you know what? The one thing that I just hate about painting is cleaning brushes. <laughs> who gives a shit <laughs> about cleaning brushes after everything dude i'm a painter yeah. i'm not a brush washer like <laughs> i don't know how to get on this like thing between each bristle you have to do all this and you have to be careful because if you're not too much you know the bristles come out yeah. and, and then, then on the stick there's only some three bristles left i'm like this is what is this right why am i doing this right yeah. so uh, uh, <laughs> painting in real life great i really respect those people who do it not because of anything they do on the canvas who gives a shit that is very <laughs> easy thing after man if they have the patience to clean brushes and like mix paint mix <laughs> paint you if you made one color and you're like this is the perfect color this color will be just the most perfect for this painting i have to make it again and you have to make it you don't know how you made it dude you were just like something 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 this purple will be for this entire section and then you do this much and then you're like what the fuck do i do dude? i don't know how i got that color only so then you're like little bit breaking bad types trying to do a little bit this a little bit water you think i can add some juice and all just make it like closer to yeah. that right I don't know how these painters do it. It's really crazy. Shit, man! It's funny that you're in the field and yeah, you're saying man, this. No, it's really bad. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Shit. So that's why digital art, because it's unlimited. If <laughs> if you got that orange, you know, you can go on using that orange, guys. I don't know if any like traditional painters are listening and they're like, "This is you see yeah. <laughs> on the computer. You don't have to mix it again, guys. You can just take more of that, and that bristles doesn't break. The canvas doesn't like fucking smart like, shit. <laughs> because also like sometimes you draw right, and you've drawn this whole scene, but it's like actually like let's say you you've drawn like somebody giving somebody something. Okay. Right. and you've drawn this person really well and the giving 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 but you've misjudged it and this person is like a little bit there's awesome. not enough yeah. space yeah. Yeah. for this person yeah. yeah on the computer we can just make the canvas <laughs> bigger guys what a revolutionary product we just make space for this other person who cares it's fine Shit. because otherwise this person is like crap <laughs> Why is this person smaller than this person, Manik? Don't ask me. This canvas is too small. Limited. <laughs> is limited. I didn't plan for this. I wanted this person to be this big. Now it's not my problem that there's only this much space left on the canvas. Yeah. Right? So many. This traditional art really it's just I mean, it's cool people do it and all. But there's just so many problems. Holy crap, yeah. dude. I mean, you're the first one who Yeah. I don't say this, but at least I looked at it this way, right? Man, I've, I've I've been through it all. <laughs> Damn, been through it all. Damn. I don't like any of it. Sure. I mean, I like it. It's enjoyable. Yeah. You know, you feel like, oh, I'm a painter, and yeah, I yeah. wear the hat and all that. Whatever you want. <laughs> like you can do all the cool stuff and yeah. like uh, all that. Yeah. But for practical purposes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I and especially because we're in the 21st yeah. century. No, no. I mean, like. There are definitely drawbacks of digital. Yeah, yeah. Like this, like this, uh, because you know the first drawback you reach in digital is like texturing, because mm. in physical it's so easy. You just put your brush like this, and some nice texture will come. Yeah. Because these are all materials; yeah. they'll interact in some way, and they'll give you a texture. Yeah. In digital, you just like now. How do I make that texture? Mm. you have to like sample the brush then you have to sample the canvas then you have to do some like mixing together subtraction addition and then you can finally get yeah. vaguely that texture yeah, yeah. so this definitely drops yeah of course yeah. just like just with like with anything else yeah. right yeah. yeah yeah so yeah how did that take you to digital art and uh so because i became like the flag bearer in college of digital art and did they expel you some shit no 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 it wasn't that serious they were just dis deeply disappointed in me <laughs> damn dude yeah deeply disappointed and um, it's fine so so i did like end end of college projects were all digital and all 
Um, but did, were they willing to accept that? Yeah, somewhat. I printed it on canvas and didn't tell them. Oh. <laughs> Using case printing, using <laughs> printing, the power of printing, which I learned for four years. <laughs> yeah. So some things I told them were digital. Some things I'm just like, I, yeah, I painted yeah, it. Yeah, you yeah, you oh, decide. Wow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you tell me. You tell me, dude. If you think yeah. it's like so much of a big deal, is this a painting or is this digital painting? Who knows? Now yeah. it's behind the glass. You tell me. <laughs> Can't touch it. <laughs> Can't touch it. You just stand ten feet away and tell me what it is. Social distance yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, that's that's how college went, and then straight out of college, started doing a bunch of like design things and illustration things, and um, freelancing. Yes, freelancing. I think we were talking about this as well, where where my first few jobs were all for designing mascots. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we need to get into this <laughs> because. Why? <laughs> Why do companies? I I mean I'm glad that like now companies don't really do mascots. Yeah. But back in the day, that was the thing. They were just like, have you seen that paper clip in MS Word? We want that. <laughs> that recall value. That brand recall value. That is, that is Clippy. the sign of a digital first uh, company. It's just like oh jeez. Why, dude? Just sell your burger or whatever. No, we don't need one gorilla to stand with your burger and sell this burger. It's fine, right? Mascots, not necessary. So, uh, but my first few projects were mascots, and it was it was a nice like um, intermingling of the things that I like because like illustration and design are two different fields, and I was coming at it from like painting and illustration side, but mascots are used in design. Right, and so like I started getting exposed to this design side because like you end up using illustration in design, Correct. right? Yeah. Um, and so yeah, so I started learning about how like how this all this stuff can integrate or like using mascots or illustration in a website, and I started getting more conscious about if but if we use this illustration here. It's going to look really stupid because like all these other elements Placements are not and, like yeah, yeah. similar to this in any way. Like they're not even vaguely uh, coherent. Yeah, yeah. And so I started to see that like connection between all these things and like typography and color and design and UI and all that. Yeah. So I um, started doing that, started being interested in it. And my brother who ran a web design company at the time called The Random Lines, uh, thought that it would be a cool thing to do to uh, to have an artist also design, right? mm -hmm. um, and it was great. We did a lot of a lot of design work, a lot of learning. That's when I like started getting uh, very passionate about like typography and uh, even handmade typography things like that. Um, and and yeah, it, it, was, it was super great. Like four or five years of of deep design learning because right. like illustration and painting you get very uh, deep into that but you forget that there is this entire other side of like words and uh, just shapes and colors and, and all that and that can also represent and have a lot of information in yeah. itself yeah yeah right and so i started studying both simultaneously and then yeah is, now i just freelance in the same sort of balance right now yeah. And yeah. a lot of people, uh, I mean, when they hear that someone's an illustrator or yeah. a designer, right? And uh, they get an, or they take a look at their art uh, or work, whatever you want to call it, right? They get an idea that, okay, they're only doing this. Yeah. But they don't think about where this fits in yeah. or how that, like you said, there's yeah. a cohesiveness to it, yeah. right? Uh, you have to really worry about the typography, you have to worry yeah. about the branding, the yeah. colors, yeah. all of that. Yeah. Because even I'm sure the clients that you who would have approached you, right? They would have said you create this mascot for me, it has to look this way, yeah, that, yeah, and all that. Sure. Then later yeah. you realize it doesn't fit on the website. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's what happens. And like <coughs> I think in India we don't even think about like art directors and stuff. Like it's not <laughs> there in our mind that there is this person who's supposed to think about all of this stuff and yeah. make it uh make it look good together. Yeah. And so we just like, oh, there's some designer, there's some illustrator, they'll do all the work. But that it just never happens unless you're overseeing the entire project. If right. you're overseeing the entire project, then you're the art director. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
so yeah that that happens more and more now thankfully mm. like yeah. 10 years ago it was pretty haphazard mm. but now people are a little bit more uh, conscious of uh, things different things uh working together in unison either for branding or even just for visual things you know books yeah. and whatever it is there should be some sort of cohesiveness to whatever it is yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. and and do you think that shift has happened because you see a lot of individuals and creators doing things at a much smaller scale and then companies and brands deciding you know what we need to kind of keep up or at least have that sort of cohesiveness as well yeah so i mean i think that it would have you know these big tech companies they're horrible but the benefit is that like when an apple or somebody says typography is cool we're going to make all our typography That's like thing. this and all that everyone else also becomes like oh if apple's doing it then it must be cool yeah. we'll also like a little bit do that yeah. also and so even though this whole follow the leader approach to design results in some really boring design it also like takes away it also brings all boats up to the same level in the sense that like everyone gets used to seeing a certain aesthetic or used to like having a minimum barrier for like design or cohesiveness right. or any of that like right. and you start getting more sensitive to that the more it is in everything mm. Mm. you know um it's not necessarily only in a brand you may like now it's in your phone like yeah. there's cohesiveness in your phone there is cohesiveness in uh your interior design there's like so slowly we're getting used to these concepts even just as lay people right mm. and uh this all tr- is sort of a trickle down from the bigger brands obviously there'll be smaller brands who've been doing this for ages they just don't have like the influence that yeah. these bigger brands the have yeah right um so yeah i, I honestly think like th- these apple type of companies deserve credit for popularizing these things like when they were not as popular mm. like typography and like a unified experience a unified design language all that stuff now we take it for granted we're like obviously it has to be like that yeah, yeah. if it's so obvious why you didn't do it 20 years ago do it <laughs> like i'll do it whatever <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right like so uh, people yeah. get used to this uh these concepts yeah. and they think they're very obvious now yeah and this happens a lot in design and music in almost any exactly. thing where you're it, like this is so obvious now yeah i think with any content right yeah. a lot of people uh, take a look at let's say a show that's produced yeah. they're like yeah that's how it was supposed to be no exactly. dude they they put in so much thought <laughs> and yeah. there like thousand changes that yeah. have finally resulted in this masterpiece or just an episode itself yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah absolutely so people start taking it for granted but you do have to like also keep in touch with how historically this stuff happened and who are the people responsible for making it happen and you just sort of now and then you tip your hat yeah. in that direction and be like okay we'll keep moving forward but thank you yeah. peace yeah. you know like yeah. there's there's one like respect for the people who came before but you don't have to like copy them you can just yeah do your yeah. own thing yeah actually that's a good uh, topic yeah. to talk about this whole right. copying yeah. um imposter syndrome right right the a lot of people get started by either taking inspiration from folks who have made it yeah. or who are doing really well mm. and uh, either you copy them entirely or yeah. you copy it's and bits of them and then you kind of bring yeah. your own flair to it yeah. or you just study them and then you bring your own you know you, it's basically like you're studying someone else's journey or their yeah. methods yeah yeah what do you have to say about that do you see a lot of that that's helped you as well and you see a lot of artists doing that like i said i got into art by copying dragon ball z from different boxes so like i'm no any nobody to say like do only original art but at the same time uh i feel like the goal over here is to contribute something that other people can't contribute like the, i'm just speaking solely artistically you can do whatever like commercial things you want but like yeah. in terms of artistic ability if you can think of things that other people can't then it sort of becomes your responsibility to do those right. things and so how do you get there is like because of how like we live our lives and all this like a random influence starts coming in you can be sort of sure that like maybe like a classmate or somebody you've known for a long time is like 50% the same as you but even then there's like this external influence that has just happened to you mm-hmm. right uh and so 
thinking about that stuff or thinking about the stuff that you really like and copying it is totally fine um to begin with yeah right but i think people mostly have a problem when you copy one person you should be copying everyone mm. just just copy everyone you like something just take it you know but when you have taken it you mix it up with all these other things that you love and then nobody will know <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> i mean that's what those people did like yeah. they also like these people who you're copying sure. from they also liked things and they liked other things and they liked all these different things and all these things that they liked got like sort of mixed in their head and like uh, whatever emulsified yeah. and add salt and all that and baked and like the what comes out is a unrecognizable from i mean maybe not unrecognizable but at least different enough yeah. from what went in yeah yeah right uh so yeah it it's not really the biggest advice is just to copy more people Mm. rather than copying fewer people and just be like oh i like just this one person's art i will do exactly what this one person does yeah. then you are a psychopath please don't do that okay please don't do that let that person do whatever they want to do right like i i don't even want to say this but like i have seen so many people who have seen alicia sousa's work yeah. and just done the same thing yeah, yeah. i'm like at least make the eyes different or something right like just steal it it's fine but like i don't know like make it like draw it with a kid blue or something instead like just something can we just not do exactly the same thing that this person has rhymes with the same name yeah just, i'm just like you know it's totally fine everyone takes influence all of that is great just it should not be like you look at this thing and you like Oh this looks like a discount version of that. You know like that is not cool. <laughs> like <laughs> discount. Yeah. <laughs> Because if you copy that person, you are going to be a discount version. You will never be better than them at that thing. <laughs> yeah. So you can't copy them exactly. Cuz they all they they've worked so much to do this. Yeah. yeah. Now if you like that, that's great. Support it, copy it, whatever. Yeah. But trying to be the same is a losing battle because they will always have the upper hand of actually doing this <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so you might as well mix it in with some other stuff you know take 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 some like take some ingredients from here and there and you know you will figure it out eventually absolutely yeah. i do have like this uh i don't know when this ends where like people have uh, signature styles and things like that i'm not sure um I've never been sure whether I have like a signature style. People have told me that I have it, but like from from within I don't feel it. Like mm. I just feel like oh I like all this. Right, right. You know, yeah. it's it's a little bit vague right now. Maybe over time it'll like uh, become more and more solidified. Yeah. I think like. it comes back to yeah. that cohesiveness itself. Yeah. Right? I mean, usually you create out of maybe in taking inspiration or at least sticking to some a small gamut of things. Yeah. right so there is usually that you see so, sounds it, work and you kind of get to know to some extent yeah but that's the thing you know you do that for brands mm. and you do that for brands because brands need to be like a clean experience mm. to some extent mm. like they need to be very simplified clean experience mm. but in my head i'm like should i do i'm a person yeah like, i know i know like, yeah why not why i'm yeah. like i'm not a brand yeah. i'm a person who draws right yeah. so i'm like i shouldn't like even though i would recommend this strongly for a brand because they're selling a product yeah, they have yeah. customers they want uh, cohesion in that but just as a personal thing i'm like i need to find the art that i like and even if it's like a little bit different 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 that's fine yeah why you know, impose all these boundaries and yeah just as a person rules. i don't think you need to do that but in a brand setting it makes most sense mm yeah absolutely i yeah. i i i don't know if i read i read this somewhere i watched yeah. a video but um, uh, there was this quote something on the lines of um, inspiration is limited or inspirational i mean inspiration is Uh, something on those lines is yeah. basically to the idea is that you in, you're inspired from some or you take inspiration from someone else and you basically if you've made it then that kind of you know trickles down and continues yeah. as well so of course Correct. yes and one topic i'd like to talk about now mm. is i think what you just said which is you're a person yeah 
as opposed to a brand but yeah. now there's a there is you're also brand. a brand you're a, like, you're a person brand yeah 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 what do you see there though with design and not just with design just generally yeah. itself i am um i feel like people get are starting to sort of conflate these two things they think that like the personal life and their like brand life are the same thing mm. that thing i'm not i'm kind of against okay right i feel like if you can separate this uh this work side of it you know and instagram is tricky because it it doesn't feel like work mm, yeah, <laughs> you know, it feels yeah. like you yeah yeah but it is work yeah you know and so therefore like if you're on social media or instagram or something like that and that's where this conversation of brand really comes up yeah, is like course. instagram and stuff yeah. like that because nobody is like walking around and shaking your hand yeah. like you meet somebody at a party <laughs> and they're like, like what's yeah. your brand <laughs> it's like who gives a shit yeah. here's, just, here's, here's my card this yeah. is my brand this is my <laughs> brand <laughs> yes i always wear a blue shirt yeah. i always like oh, it's fine yeah. <laughs> so it only happens on instagram right so in that scenario i think that as much as possible if you can separate out the fact that this is a game that you are playing for business sake mm-hmm. do whatever you want but also retain the fact that you can also just do whatever you want uh, just not on this yeah, right yeah. you you could just like a lot of artists i know work in a lot of different styles and then they like post or like the public only knows one of one of those things right or they do many things and the public only knows one of them mm. you know so that's like a it's like a branding uh trick where it's like okay fine i'm okay with like this part of my life being public and being like uh, the brand mm-hmm. and the rest of all of this just keep it private just enjoy it just yeah. because it starts to get like tainted by all this like likes and like yeah. just nonsense that's uh, that's surrounding this thing so like you like you honestly you have to think of it like a sacrifice you are offering a sacrifice over here for business sake but you don't have to like just keep giving sacrifices you yeah. just whatever you want to put over there you yeah. to make that work yeah. everything else just keep it away from that yeah. <laughs> keep it far away from this <laughs> sacred table of sacrifice <laughs> don't put everything there right right yeah. because i think people i mean that whole um, there's no boundary anymore right there are a lot yeah. of people who are so again it goes back to imposing boundaries and you know imposing yeah. the sort of pressure on yourself where uh, if maybe you had a thought about putting up let's say a particular type of design which mm-hmm. you you know found really I felt very passionate about it and you're like wow this looks great and I'd love to work on it work yeah, on yeah. you know on top of that but then you realize man I've done 30 different looking designs and I can't I mean one yeah. type of designs I can't really step out of that but yeah. who's judging who's there to I mean it's your life at the end of the day right? it is your life so i mean there are these two sides of it like it, it is your life and i would encourage people to just do whatever the heck they want but at the same time within instagram there are things that work and things that don't work yeah and that is the problem with it but if you want it then you might as well play by its rules right like it, otherwise just avoid it yeah don't do it yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. so much easier yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like then trying to fight this thing right just don't do it yeah a lot right? of people find another usually, way yeah a right? lot of people get into it and then they realize yeah it's a couple of months in they yeah. realize my god this is like you said it's yeah. not supposed to be this type of work yeah. it, i thought it's instagram it is fun right now it's just like my god i got to keep up never be fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> never fun yeah. Yeah. um yeah, yeah I, i like yeah it's 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 just a it's just a really like slippery slope for this thing because like as artists like you start becoming the artist as your identity and then like you start including more and more in this business side and you forget that it's a business yeah but it is a business <laughs> yeah right yeah. and that business ends at some point like you can also just live your life also yeah, yeah right yeah. um so yeah that because it's so blurry is where the questions arise yeah, yeah right yeah um, and it's also because yeah. people are constantly uh, you know behind numbers and they're kind of you know trying to yeah. like you said you have to yeah. play by the rules if you yeah. need to get ahead in that yeah. game yeah. but uh, a lot of people get you know carried away and at that point they realize my god i i don't think it's worth <laughs> it yeah 
Oh yeah. God, yeah. I think that's a good segue into uh, the, I think, a major tenet or major philosophy that you have. And I don't want to call it that because you don't believe in any of those things, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> but this is the kind of guy who's just like, relax <laughs> and it's fine. Relax but, and it's fine is my motto. Yeah. That's the, that's the <laughs> philosophy that I live by. Yeah. Relax and it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that would be the title of the show. Relax and it's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I think you spoke about and we actually laughed about uh, a lot about not being a maximalist or not when doing I, yeah. a lot and really getting yourself so worked up on these, you know, small things that, you know, you look back later and you laugh about yeah. right? Uh, either it could be work or, you know, just you putting pressure on yourself or someone else putting pressure on you and yeah. all of that. So, yeah, what do you, I mean, this is, this is great stuff because I know we're going to have a laugh, right? Yeah. Around this, but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we started talking about like minimalism and maximalism and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, we'll get into that bit, that term yeah, yeah. terminologies and yeah. all that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, yeah, I'm not sure what to say about it. Like, I do support this whole minimalist thing mm -hmm. because how many things will you have, right? right? Like in all areas and to some extent that does tie into branding in the sense that that is what you're doing. You yeah. are trying yeah. to find the minimum with which you can be effective. Right. Like that's, that's yeah. essentially what branding is. Yeah. You're like, okay, if I don't need five more typefaces, why do I have them? Yeah. Will I just use this one typeface? Yeah. If I don't need these 10 other colors, why do I have them? So like you slowly start to like question what the, the real purpose of this is. And you, you start to see that this is more effective, the simpler it is. And uh, so the same concept that applies in branding, I think can be applied to everything else where it's like you try and find the most effective thing you do whatever you you can like research and try and find a, bu a bunch of options but as you find the most effective thing you just run with that thing get rid of everything else mm. yeah yeah because you don't need 10 bookshelves <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think a lot of people um, yeah. either they don't strive to reach that or they realize yeah. at one point uh, I'm doing so many things. I'm spreading myself thin. Yeah. And uh, the idea is to get to a point where I just have to, it could be just have one typeface, like you yeah. said, or yeah. maybe let's talk from a social media perspective, having to not post on a daily basis and just post once a month. And, you know, yeah. people still like what you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, it kind of becomes a very, that sort of funnel, right? Yeah. But that's, I think, only after a certain point where you either have realized it or you've st started showing that sort of traction. Right? But how do yeah. you find that balance? It's a little tricky because... The balance between what and what? In the sense that uh, uh, if you have to get your name out there, yeah. you need to like literally, you know, the, the motto is that you can, you know, put your head down, do the work. One of the you worst. That, yeah, the, the worst the, motto. <laughs> yeah. And if you put the, your head down, <laughs> how will you see? How will you see? Just keep like crashing into the wall. Yeah. yeah. There's a freaking... There's a, cliff ahead of you yeah you are looking here yeah you're not looking at the cliff yeah it's stupid or the you monster should like in your game just look around <laughs> look everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. so that's one, down. Yeah, yeah that's one aspect of it where there's uh, i think the hustle right yeah. oh and then God. yeah on, on the yeah. other side of the spectrum it's like once you made it you realize you know what i can maybe you know take my foot off the pedal a little bit mm. and relax so you obviously don't really vibe with the whole, you know, having to really go crazy and, you know, do everything. But instead, yeah. you know, just pick what you have to and, yeah. and do those. But how do you kind of, I mean, do you not care about making it? Or is it more on the lines of, this is where I can find my satisfaction and happiness? I think I kind of know the answer, but, you know, I, I'd like to hear from you. Too. Dude, like, so in philosophy, you talk about like in stoicism stuff, they have a really interesting way of thinking about this. They say like, the dissatisfaction you feel is the gap between where you are and where you want to be, right? And there's two ways of solving this dissatisfaction between where you are and where you want to be. Either you could like move from where you are a lot, a lot, a lot, and like keep pushing and, and reach where you want to be. And maybe by then the goalpost of where you want to be would have moved and so you keep moving, yeah. right? But there's always this gap and this gap is dissatisfaction. The other way of doing it is to not want that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it should just be like, 
I just want this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? And you can keep going. But at least the goalpost and you are actually at the same t- place. Relatively closer. Yeah. 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 So the amount of dissatisfaction you feel or the amount that you feel like, oh, I've not done this, I've not done this. Like, why are you thinking about this? You can still keep moving. You can still keep doing things. Right. But you don't really need to think that I have to do that and therefore I must do all this hustle, keep my head down, fall off the cliff, all that like nonsense. <laughs> like work hard. I'm not saying don't do that. Yeah. But uh, it, it's really like, it's really just a mental game. Like if you put this goal over here and like you were saying, like once I reach there, I can put my... Uh, yeah. foot off the pedal and I can relax or I can be happy then why what are you doing till then dude yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. just unhappy till then it sounds yeah. stupid yeah so if you just want to reach there go there but you don't need the goalpost to be there like you can just keep the goalpost here and always be happy with what you're doing and like keep doing more things yeah and yeah. you'll reach somewhere. Exactly. And <laughs> like, more, you'll reach somewhere. Yeah. And more often than not, usually yeah. I've noticed that people who kind of you know go with that mentality because of how happy they are or how satisfied they are uh, or at least fulfilled to some extent, yeah. right? It usually seeps into all of their work and you can kind of see them, you know, yeah. transitioning in a very different path altogether. And then that kind of, you know, gets you that sort of, you know, maybe something that you didn't want, but it yeah. comes your way and yeah. you know, who knows? Just things yeah. keep happening because like even this, like if you, if you know, if there's people ask like, where do you see yourself 20 years from now and all, man. Yeah. You mentioned that. Who right? knows? You know what I'm eating for dinner. <laughs> yeah. How are you supposed to answer this question? You know what all happens in life. <laughs> yeah. Who knows, dude? Yeah. So like, but you can know what you want to do or how you want to spend your time each day. That you can know. So you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Where it goes, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, that's so true. It's fine. Yeah. Right? yeah. Because like, actually, it makes no difference. Like. You can keep the goalpost there and you can work, 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 work and be unhappy all this time and then maybe be happy at the end if you've not forgotten how to be happy. Or you can just just be fine with it throughout and still work. Yeah. 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 It's like, and then you're just choosing to do this. Not right. because you have to or because you have to prove that you made it or something. Because yeah. that's how you want to spend your time. Yeah. This is uh, no anecdote, but I've, I heard... Um, I think I was exploring someone's journey and they were talking about how, uh, what's the point of doing all this? And th- I think that's the same thing that you're yeah. saying as well, right? Yeah. Which is, you you want to get to this point and you're, you know, you have sacrificed your health, you have sacrificed your life, you have mm-hmm. sacrificed your time, your family, all of that. And you get there and you're basically overweight, you're shitty, your health's gone for a toss. Mm-hmm. And what's the yeah. point of doing all that? And again, this is a conversation I was having with a guest yesterday. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't get how habits work, right? In the sense that you you want to either lose weight, but once you lose weight, it yeah. doesn't end there, right? Yeah. You got to continue to keep that up yeah. or you stay healthy at least. Yeah, you can't just like say, I've lost five kgs, now I'll eat fucking three burgers yeah. and I'm back yeah, yeah. to, you know, doing whatever I want to yeah. do. So the same thing there as well, right? If you have done something habitually for 20 years, yeah. there's a good chance that that's so ingrained in you that you yeah. won't be able to just like, Take the you know foot off the pedal and you know there's more unhappiness and all of that. Because if you get used to the fact that like this will eventually give you happiness, this will eventually give you happiness, then you start to think that oh, that like because then and if you do that for so many years, you will never be able to accept that. Okay, now I'm done. Mm. Now I'm done. Yeah. Like it takes a lot to then like after 20 years be like oh I have reached it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> You're not going to do that yeah. because your habit is not that. Like yeah. your habit is to like do this, do this, do that, chase chat, whatever. I want more. I want this, whatever. Yeah. Like you, that's become the habit. Right. right. And then so you have to, if, I mean, it's a perfectly fine way of living if you want to do that. But like just know in your head that it will continue like that. Like that, that habit will just continue. Like you will continue feeling like I need that also. I need yeah. that also, yeah. and I need that also. And then you'll do whatever it takes. And once you reach there, you'll want this also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fine, dude. <laughs> you do what you want. But also know that the other way of doing it, with uh, according to like hundreds of years ago philosophy, is just you pull the goalpost back 
and then you're fine. <laughs> yeah, you're there already. <laughs> you're there extent. already, and yeah. you have like a new appreciation of all the things that you already have. You're like, actually, this is pretty great yeah. already. Yeah, yeah. I think a good topic that we can next talk about is um, how people are just so discontent with life. I mean, right? It's something that i at least i personally have noticed with a lot of people and it could be just millennials or gen, just the current generation itself yeah, yeah. not sure if it could be because of social media it could be because of so many factors right it just, is yeah it is okay <laughs> <laughs> i mean we don't need to be like we've come far enough we don't need to be like yeah. i wonder what it is there is one difference between all these generations and this one. But Instagram. I can't quite put my finger on what it is. Instagram. It is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, what, what have we seen there? I mean, is it something that you have personally experienced as well? And do you also have to constantly remind yourself, you know what? You know, this is just, I'm just getting pulled into that rabbit hole and I shouldn't probably like, worry about that. Um, I actually feel bad because I haven't taken it very seriously much. Okay. And I want to. I'm going to take it super seriously. Okay. But at the same time, it's a game. Like, like, like you should keep it. I think the trick to Instagram is you should keep it with like clash of clans and like in your, when you're arranging your apps, mm. just keep like whatever mind sweep. I don't know what you play. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like whatever you yeah, play, yeah, dude. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, Jetpack Joyride? Is okay. that still a game? I don't like, know. You tell me. It used to be quite a like famous one back in the day. Crossy Road? I don't know, dude. Like, whichever. So you keep your games and you put Instagram in the middle of that. Okay. So that every time you go to that screen and you're like about, about to click on Instagram, you remember, this is also just a game. Mm. Right? You don't have to like, don't keep it next to phone call. <laughs> right? Like that people make that mistake. Like yeah. they'll keep phone, yeah. Instagram. Not the same at all. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. These two are very different things, depending on how you use it. Yeah, yeah. But mostly you use it like a game. Right. Right? Right. You just do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. When you say that you haven't gotten around to doing it as much as you would. Like, I do you don't mean? post much. I don't like whatever. Like, I've not taken it seriously in the way that okay. Okay. most artists should. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. And I think I should. Like, I think I should give it a shot to, to take it seriously. Because I already know enough about it and I don't know enough about like um, how it works and all that to um, try and use it in a way that is still a game. Like I don't depend on it in any way. Yeah. But this whole seriousness of Instagram started coming about because I realized like when you have products, you know, you have like a game and you have like a book and I have all these like I have like a planner and stuff like that. And it's also nice for these things to actually reach the people who would get most joy from them. You know, when you make things, you always imagine the best person for this thing. You know, like I make a planner and I've, so I made like a procrastination planner. I don't know if you've seen it. So I, I did like a planner where it's a to-do list. It, every day it gives you a to-do list and then it gives you one reason not to do any of these things. Okay. Right? So, like, it gives you an alternative. You know, you can do this, 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 this or you can just count the number of stairs in your building. <laughs> Whatever. Like, ways to procrastinate. So, right. I thought of 365 ways to procrastinate and I made a planner. And, like, so that was last year or something. Okay. And I realized, like, there will be a lot of people who will get a lot of joy out of this, who will get a lot of laughs out of this, who will get a lot. But I have no way of reaching them. Like, I, I don't actually, I can't get this to them. Mm. I don't want 10 billion people. There aren't even 10 billion people. I'm counting the people on Mars also. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that you all don't know about. Yeah. There's actually 3 billion already yeah. on Mars. Yeah. Really have, for them on Mars. Yeah. They have my <laughs> book already. So these remaining people on Earth, uh, you know, you don't need that many. You just need what is correct for the product, right? And in, in my case, it's usually very small numbers that are enough to release a product, right? But even that is hard. So that's why I'm thinking of taking Instagram seriously for a while. 
to it. try and reach those exact people who would like these things. Hmm. So, so are and you talking about them these things? <laughs> advertising itself, um, because again, it's a yeah. it's a little tricky, right? I mean, unless yeah. you have such a vast or wide yeah. reach, it becomes very tricky for you to you know get it to the right people. Yeah, but I think you can just by what you put up. Okay. Right, like because obviously no one's going to follow you for like depending on what you put up, people follow you for that, right? Mm. So like. Um, if you're an artist and you're like selling artistic things, then it's a good chance that most of the people who follow you are following you for your art. So, uh, so in that way, like it sort of self curates. Mm-hmm. There is a little bit of muddle over here where because like you don't know where this audience has come from. Yeah, like yeah. they may not. How do they even find you? How do yeah. you even yeah. find you? So uh, there is this thing of. You don't know why people are following you. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, yeah. like you can have whatever number, yeah. but like the real reason why they are following you, you will never know. Like, mm. you can just guess. Maybe they like my drawings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, oh, yeah. I don't know why yeah. you're there. Maybe they like your name. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe yeah. like a yeah. name. Maybe yeah. they have the same name as me. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe they're like nice, yeah. oh, manic. I want to follow yeah, yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> Who knows? I'm not checked. <laughs> Um, it'd be crazy if I followed by like thousands of people named Marek, Marek. and I never knew this. <laughs> Some from <laughs> like, Mars as well. That's the only reason they follow me is because they're also named Marek. Um, Shit. It's a good so, idea, dude. You should create a fucking account <laughs> where this Akash and Marek and we get all the Akash and Mareks to follow. Yeah. That's epic. <laughs> yeah. And each day we'll post one Akash. <laughs> so, yeah. All the Akashes will unite. <laughs> Faces of Akash and Marek. Just... <laughs> An Instagram account for Akash. Which Akash? All of them. <laughs> All the Akashes have one Instagram account Dude, this now. This is incredible. <laughs> you can see some merch and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It'll be very popular yeah. among one particular demograph yeah. named Akash. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. disruptive. Man, this, this I've got to change no. the name of the show and no, change it. Yeah, man. We've got to go to Silicon Valley with this. We're going to get round A funding for this. Um, a, a for Akash, yeah. A for Akash. We stop over there. Oh, shit. Round B will be for... Oh, man. That's crazy talk. Yeah, but yeah, I get so what you're saying. I spent like 10 seconds. I couldn't think of a name with B. I was like... Bhagat. <laughs> Bhagat. Yeah, yeah, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Round B, round yeah. series B will be for uh, yeah. for Bhagat. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. I forgot what it's happening. Right. So you have uh, <laughs> you have some people who are following you for something, and and uh, hopefully that aligns with the things that you are making. And I found that I want a few more people. Because of the nature of the things that I make and because I'm making them on my own, mm. they need a certain amount of numbers to be able to make sense to produce this. Like for a game, for example, right. making one game is extremely expensive. Yeah. But like making at least these many, right. it starts to make sense. Right? Right. So, um, so that, which is essentially the concept behind like crowdfunding and stuff like that, right? So I had done uh, crowdfunding for my graphic novel as well. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, so so that was pretty comfortable. Did you see a I, lot of uh, traction there? Yeah, I mean, a lot is relative, obviously. Graphic yeah. novels are I mean, enough a, for a you? Niche. Yeah, more yeah. than enough for me. Yeah. So more than enough for me to get it printed, distributed to the people who, who paid, uh, for, who it, paid yeah. for it, but also have a lot of these copies left so that I can sell them right. wherever else, right? right? Um, and the good thing about crowdfunding is that like, because you're working with like smaller number of people paying higher value for this thing, you can do like the cool things that you may not put in a mass market product, right? Right. Yeah. So like, I love books that are very well printed and very well produced. But at the same time, it's a little bit expensive to make all the comics like Hardbound, Dust Jacket, Gold Foil, yeah. whatever. So I was like, okay, if you do this Kickstarter, I'll get you the craziest looking book. I'll put like full gold everywhere, like all the thing, foiling, uh, UV finish for the cover, Dust Jacket, name in the Dust Jacket, Hardbound. Yeah. Everything is like yeah, super sexy. So up there. Yeah. Right? And you can do that. But because if you're just making a product to sell for 200 rupees on Amazon, you can't do anything. You have to just do stick to those, something yeah. and then do it. 
Mm. And stick to only a couple of these limited... Yeah, whatever. You can make it nice in whatever way you want. But it can... Like, I think crowdfunding enables you to do like a... The best possible version of the product in a limited quantity. Yeah. Because those people care enough. Yeah. I mean, the fact that they literally put their money on it, right? Is is, is testament enough. And it's nice. It's nice. It's nice to know that there are like (coughs) only these many hardcover books of my... Uh, of my book Bonneville just there in the world and I will never print it again it's just there mm. right and yeah. those are the people who made this happen and yeah. it's fine yeah. you know and it's nice so I think I'll do that again for the board game we'll see mm. yeah. yeah but that's what I mean that's why I'm sort of pushing I'm thinking of pushing on Instagram because maybe I can find those people who are passionate about these kind of things and then it's uh, it's a uh, yeah, it, it's helpful for each other. Got it. In a way. Because they'll help me in the sense that I can make, make this a make reality. these products a yeah. reality. And I'll help them yeah. to have fun. Yeah. Which is, I feel, yeah. more important. Yeah. Like, I should, they should thank me. <laughs> <laughs> you know when, like, influencers and, like, Instagram people thank their audience? Yeah, I've seen I'm a lot like, of them. what the fuck are you <laughs> saying, dude? They didn't do anything. <laughs> These 100,000, 300,000, 1 million people didn't do shit for you. <laughs> they are just on their phones procrastinating their work. And double tapping and you away. You are thanking them. <laughs> you did all the work. You are putting posts every day. You're whatever, drawing or singing or whatever. Thank you. <laughs> for what? <laughs> they should say thank you. Yeah. Why are you saying thank you? <laughs> Ask them, fucking, if I don't have one million thank yous tomorrow, I'm not playing, yeah, I'm not putting come. my sec next song and on. You thank me first for the previous song. You know, like, yeah, yeah. what did they do? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't do anything. So this is what I mean. Like, like social media can be a, it's a bit of a game and people forget what the actual dynamic is. Right. Yeah. 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 I think, um, uh, the next the next question I have here is uh, you spoke about how you want to make this a reality and mm. you can get it to the right people, right? Yeah. Because the reach, of course, most people are on the platform anyway. Yeah. I think a lo- what a lot of people forget is that you need to do it consistently to kind mm. of you know really you know make a mark. You can't just say I come up with a game. When you say a lot of people, are you indirectly talking about me? <laughs> because you can say it. <laughs> you can say Manik, you forget that consistency is key. Yeah? No. <laughs> it's fine. I won't feel. We bad. started the conversation on that. <laughs> that not been posting often. <laughs> yeah, yeah. a lot of people do forget that actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, because uh, if someone needs to validate it or at least know that you are in it for good, yeah, uh, you can't just you know uh, create a website with half a page and say it's going to be up for five hours and now you pay me you know x amount of dollars or whatever. Yeah. Right. Because you need to really prove that this POC, this proof of concept, is yeah. something that you've been working on for so long, and you know that's how you can make it a reality as well, right? So, yeah. And and ha- another question I had was. How do you do that if you are planning to, you know, uh, post this on your personal handle itself? Are you planning to do that? Are you planning to go about so doing I, it separately? When, or? when, like, personal handle, when you say you mean, okay, so the currently, I only have one handle. Exactly. And that handle is a art handle. Right. There is no separate personal handle. Mm. And I don't care about personal things on Instagram. Mm. In fact, I push in the other direction. Like, I will only talk about the stupidest things. A friend of mine wanted to give me a haircut. He's not a barber. Right. I think I've seen that. Right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, this needs to go on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. This is the one thing. I don't post about my life. I don't I don't think any of those... Like, who are these random people who need to know about my life? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So, but maybe they should see a pastry chef give an artist a haircut. <laughs> And the full thing. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> One hour. It's not unedited. Even, unedited. <laughs> just, just sitting there while he <laughs> like, this is great. This is like anti, like if you search for tips for how to grow on social media, it is the opposite of all the tips you'll get. <laughs> Like post something people want to see. No, no. <laughs> no. Post something that I want to see tomorrow again. 
hashtag no <laughs> post something relevant to the remaining content on your feed no <laughs> <laughs> so i've treated it like that i've treated it like how badly can i do this right till now right as a just a way of like like taking the illusion of it away i mean there is no right, right or wrong right? yeah 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 so now i'm going to actually do art like <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I don't actually do that. I do all the nonsense, <laughs> and then I forget that. Oh yeah, actually, I should use it for business. Yeah, that's why I got on this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> forgot that. That actually, I've been so like determined to prove that this is nonsense that I forgot that I can actually use it also. Right. Um. So yeah. So I I I, I definitely not gonna do like personal stuff, and I've never really done personal stuff on it. So it's always been an art. Right. No. So, for uh-huh. instance, let's say your artwork, yeah. your illustrations and designs, yeah. uh, and now your game, although has some aspect of design and all of that, you are now going to be pitching that as a product. All of it. Same thing. It's yeah. all the same all thing, the right? Same so things. that's the thing, right? How how do you uh, like? For instance, you said someone follows you for a reason. Yeah. So they probably follow you for your designs. Yeah. Now that you're coming up with a board game. you have got to get it out to the right people yeah. so even the same thing with me right with my podcast as well i decided not to have a separate handle yeah. but to put it under my same thing because sure. it's it's something that's my passion in even yeah. and tomorrow i might decide to say maybe i'll stop at 50 episodes and then move forward with something else yeah. right so that's that's the way or the route i decided to yeah. take uh so the same thing here right so how do you do that because a lot of people are finding it a little tricky yeah. to uh manage this with their personal brand right. or you know maybe different products or services that they've come up with but kind of keep it under the same umbrella too so what what do you think i mean it's a little tricky i know it's a little like there is obviously a point after which creating an actual company or a brand makes sense and i do have a company mm-hmm. and that i use for a lot of things like i actually mark my products and all with wicked and wise entertainment which is my company like but and i use it for business related things you know it's useful to have a company right um but also within the instagram thing mm. it's having it in one place as long as it's vaguely the same thing mm. is nice only mm. like um i know like people will say um suppose you're a like i'm also a writer mm-hmm. eh, but i don't really i'm not going to post writing related things got it you know yeah although i have used stories to do that quite a bit got it i've tried to like break stories in whatever ways i can <laughs> it's always been like a I, i think i've got nine highlights where i've like tried to break the format of stories entirely got it <laughs> like i i uh this is this is, this is like this i feel like when i pass on no they should just take my instagram story highlights and put it in the museum saying <laughs> think this is the heights of beautiful <laughs> like instagram honestly instagram i don't know why they've not called me yet because like <laughs> they only didn't know that this was possible and i found out <laughs> they only like on this i don't know instagram or whatever some i was the instagram ceo but dude you don't know what you can do so what i did was you know the uh, brooklyn 99 yeah, uh, yeah. uh, theme song right yeah. Dun, dun, dun. yeah right so i played each note separately like i recorded the like trumpet like hits of each note of this thing separately okay right and uploaded them in order okay in stories okay one note at a time so when you go through the stories depending on how you tap you can play the brooklyn nine nine <laughs> theme song by going to the next story at the right timing so you got to like turn 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 so if you know the song no no you you have to know the song obviously but you play through the entire song and i recorded it one note at a time i was like okay that's one story 
and then and then so you these guys would have been like what the fuck exactly is <laughs> so this instagram and all they don't know they just think they're making some random thing no so i know is, i know so <laughs> <laughs> see it's like honestly yeah they need to make an instagram museum and just put my phone over there finish it off then close the museum because nobody's going <laughs> to close it <laughs> <laughs> but it should be there <laughs> nobody's going to come but um yeah deserves it sorry what was the question <laughs> i feel like i feel like manik did you make the brooklyn 99 soundtrack on stories was not the question <laughs> oh man i'm like what, I'm, what I'm, is the question <laughs> i'm like double checking here like yeah. did, I, did i ask that did no ask that? No, yeah. So the idea is about getting different products and so on. Oh, right, right. Are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do it. Just do it under one thing. I yeah. think. Yeah. I mean, have a. You know when the line is crossed at which like it needs to be something else. Yeah. On yeah, its own. Yeah. But until that line, keep at it. Yeah. Do it within your own, uh, like as as an artist uh, right. or as a whatever you are. Yeah. Right. And then just don't do. Just please don't do personal stuff. Just, just don't. You go to the beach, fucking you, go to the beach. <laughs> Nobody needs to know, <laughs> unless you are selling sand, like that's your business, and you like you have to like, show them where. <laughs> can I got this sand from this beach and all that? Then yeah. fine. Unless you are a sand seller, nobody <laughs> needs to know you went to the beach. Sand sellers. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. And and. what uh, a lot of people don't get also is that there's the other side of this where yeah. if you have made it as let's say someone who is let's say an artist yeah. right there's a good chance that once you've gotten a following or a gathering or you know people who actually do care about what you do if you come up with something that's of quality there's a good chance that you've already you know you've gotten them sold on the idea yeah. to some extent yeah. i'm not talking about everyone raising their yeah, hand yeah. saying you know yeah, i yeah. put money you know yeah. wherever the idea is but uh, I think that goes. That's again testament to your good work itself, right? As yeah, you, like you you were talking about how uh, you should uh, post regularly and then sort of build up this reputation for uh, for the work that you do, mm-hmm. or, uh, and all that is true. Uh, but at the end of the day, you're sort of just you, you're just providing value in whatever way you can, right? right. Like for the most part, like whether you're a singer or whether you're Uh, an artist or uh, or even whether you're a podcaster like you're mostly in the entertainment slash philosophy side mm, mm. right like art spills between entertainment and philosophy right right that's what it is right and the value that we bring to people's lives is actually just an emotional value it's, it's nothing else like you, you can't eat my drawings um unless <laughs> <laughs> the next idea <laughs> chocolate drawings. yeah oh yeah <laughs> now your chitrakala parishad people are like we can use digital for this bitch we'll see <laughs> chocolate drawings coming soon <laughs> oh shit uh, but a board game you can eat <laughs> a board game you can eat if you lose you start eating yeah in your face and your mouth yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so um <coughs> sorry what was i saying Uh, <laughs> wait a second. Fully lost. Uh, yeah, uh, your the value that you provide. Oh yeah. yeah. So so you as entertainers or or, or as uh, you you sort of giving people just emotions. That's all your sort of role is. And if you can do that uh, effectively, even over a short period of time, people are willing to trust you. Like like if you do that very well, because I, I've I've come across Instagram accounts where there are like. five posts yeah and they are just so good i'm like this is crazy yeah i will be here for the sixth post yeah yeah <laughs> like yeah. whenever it comes yeah because it's just very good and it's just uh, emotionally stimulating right so um yeah entertainers mostly are just like the value that they provide are mostly just to make you feel happy sad scared whatever these things i think it's always all, yeah. all it's all just value right yeah. it's just emotions like you said it could yeah. be educational value it could be yeah. uh, 
happiness quotient value mm. if that makes sense yeah, and sure. you know just all these things yeah. uh, i this is a good uh, uh, i mean this reminded me of this account i uh, saw on youtube yeah where this guy just had two videos and the second video said how i got 100000 subscribers or the 100000 you get that silver button right with just one video <laughs> like good. that's epic right so the i think he's a stand up comedian <laughs> yeah and, has to be yeah yeah and he's got about 15 million views or hits on his first video and he's killed it he's got now it's about 250000 subs is too funny yeah so it's 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 great i mean that's too good it, it consistency that is one the thing. value that you've provided is you made everyone laugh <laughs> laugh yeah <laughs> yes yeah, exactly which is great yeah yeah, yeah it's a great uh, uh, value to have which is why when uh, so kind of i was thinking of what should this podcast be about and all that it should only be stupid things like we <laughs> cannot <laughs> We talk about so many serious things in real we are, life. Yeah, <laughs> we are experts in these things. Yeah, <laughs> we are experts in everything else. <laughs> we are not going to talk about what we know about. <laughs> only some dumb shit. That's the only thing we'll talk about. Yeah, that's actually a good segue into that. So, yeah. what is this podcast about? And uh, a lot of people don't know that you are basically, you know, when yeah. you start the podcast with uh, Kanan. Uh, a couple of months ago okay depending on when you're listening to this a couple of years ago <laughs> maybe humanity has <laughs> civilization has uh, has all gone and now you are the last one and you found this video recording and you're like a couple of months ago there were podcasts no no like depending on when you or maybe they found a phone in the museum <laughs> in the museum they're looking at it and they're like what this but the year is 3025 <laughs> How could it what be is a podcast? What is a podcast? <laughs> yeah. What language are they speaking? This is crazy. <laughs> a couple of months ago, as of today, yeah. even today is relative. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but I can't be bothered. Yeah, uh, yeah. So you figure it out. Yeah. 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 Nice. And what's the show about? Then? So the show is about. Uh, we like to think of it as uh, taking very seriously the most silly things in the world. Okay. We will take them very seriously. Okay. Right. Um, so we have a bunch of different segments. The show is divided into uh, different segments to keep the pace going. Um, <clears throat> so, for example, we have a segment called Shopline Bling. Okay. Right, where people write in if they want to purchase something, and they have weighed the pros and cons, and they don't know whether they want to purchase this or not, or whether they should or not, or whether it will add value to their lives. and we decide for them <laughs> just oh. like think about it and we're like oh you want to buy this and the good part is it's not just like expensive things like a tv or something like that people will write in being like i want to buy this cup <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and we'll seriously debate it and like what are the what are the pros and cons of buying this <laughs> cup <laughs> and then we uh, try to recommend uh, so so like that the show is just full of uh segments that take things seriously but is is also obviously just the point is just to have a good time right and are these long form episodes and uh, yeah they're about an hour each okay um, okay yeah. yeah um full of just silliness uh we've known each other for a long time and so there's like a history of silliness from which to uh, uh pull up content <laughs> yeah 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 i'm sure um So yeah, so it is very fun. No new notifications. I didn't even see the name of the yeah. podcast. This is how bad I am at marketing things. I'm like, yes, there's this game. There's this podcast. All these people in 3025 don't know what any of these things are. But yeah. maybe Google will still be around. Yeah. So then you can type no new notifications and you'll get the podcast. Nice. Yeah. Cool. No, I think that's a good place for us to wrap things up. I think we have laughed Beautiful. enough. We have just also spoken about yeah. you know all these uh silly things and silly not things. so silly things mostly silly things, things. Yeah, yeah yeah i think It's the moment 40. yeah exactly <laughs> we're all experts in silly things i oh, feel all the experts at silly things yeah we want to be experts at like fitness yeah. and these lame important things dude i'm yeah. a i'm a pins expert <laughs> you come to me when you want to talk about pins, pins. <laughs> or whether you have to buy it yeah. shop line there <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Dude. I yeah. took a long time picking out this pin dude. I, I didn't know where like so I have 40 pins. What? I really am a pins expert. What? So 40 pins and like depending on what shirt I wear 
and how I've combed my hair and what socks I'm wearing. Those are the three factors. That's what I try and decide which pin to wear. Dude, <laughs> right? Where did this pin idea come from? So it started just because um, I wanted a way to like buy from designers and buy from artists that I can actually have with me, you know, because like prints are a bit weird. Like buying prints is just a bit weird because like, how do you put up, like the, you can only put up one print yeah, and like yeah. this is only that much space. So I was like, pins is just a small enough form factor that like it can always be there and it's always like, I'll, it's a great way to like support a designer or an artist uh, somewhere. In India, not a lot of like pin artists, uh, but uh, internationally, a lot of them. Oh yeah? Right? Yeah, and, and so it's really nice to like get some pins and you have to like wait for like three months for shipping and all. All this is before yeah, yeah. the apocalypse that we are currently <laughs> living through. Um, Again, depending on when they're watching this. Depending uh, on which, when you're watching apocalypse. this. Yeah. <laughs> apocalypse 2.0 actually. <laughs> Um, yeah. So yeah, so I started collecting pins and then now my friends keep like gifting me pins wherever they go. They like go to other countries, they'll be like searching for pins and Manik wants the pin. It's like, I think, in fact, you should always have a thing which makes it easier for people to buy gifts for you. Because don't, don't be like that person who likes everything. <laughs> so and I then not satisfied with anything. <laughs> I fucking hate belts. Right? <laughs> so I've said that. I don't hate belts. But I said it so that to make it easier for everyone to buy me pins. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and all my pins are like, have like hidden meetings and all. Shit, we should have an episode just on pins, <laughs> just on pins. with Manak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, this pin, uh, <laughs> the, the, is a subtle commentary on social media actually dude <laughs> the uh, honeycomb represents uh, if you say bumble instagram. i will kick you <laughs> <laughs> instagram the honeycomb represents instagram and the bees who are attracted to the honeycomb represent actual bees <laughs> because the problem these days is that bees too much on instagram that's why we have a deficit of honey in the world. Makes and sense. we keep telling these bees, don't waste your life on Instagram bees. Go whatever, run around the flowers, make whatever honey, do the things that you're supposed to do. And these bees are like, no, oh, but it's cool. Yeah. Throwback Thursday and all these buzzwords and whatever. And we're like, no bees, that's not the point of life. Why are you working on this? And then, you know, but bees are stupid, dude. What do you yeah, do? I but know. humans like, are really intelligent. We would never yeah. do something like that. I know. We would yeah. never be attracted to some yeah, stupid don't thing be a like bee. that. It's, it's horrible. Oh, uh, yeah. shit. Yeah, dude. So, yeah, this is a good place for us to Superb. wind up uh, yes. things. Uh, something I ask of all our guests is one last message that you'd like to put out there. Anything that is, you know, something on the lines of a billboard message or something right. that uh, maybe is close to you, something whimsical too, but right. probably something people can relate to and something that people can take something away. Something that people can relate to. Oh. Just think of the talent that you have and all the like, just think of the best thing that you think you're the best at and just know that you're not that good at it also. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Like, just calm down. Like, whatever you okay, maybe you have a little bit below what you yeah. think you are. Just live your life with that kind of attitude and you'll be really happy. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Oh, cool man. And okay, uh, cool. Yeah, and the people have to find you online. You like can find me online through email. Okay. <laughs> I will leave that in your <laughs> Only. <laughs> no, uh, Instagram. Uh, now I'll, I'll start. I'll see. Yeah, now you after have to. This, like, yeah. After all this. You thing, can't I'm just like, go and get like, haircuts and shit. No, dude. no, no. <laughs> I'll delete the haircuts and all these things from Instagram. Maybe by the time you watch this a millennium from now, <laughs> yeah. there will be no more haircuts on my Instagram. Or Brooklyn Nine Nine. No, no, that'll be there for sure. Oh, that, that needs to go to the museum. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, you can find me on Instagram, yeah. Manik De Silva. Yeah. No middle name Paul and all. Yeah. I don't say my middle name because then people search for Manik Paul De Silva, who is a stripper. Mm, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should do. Um, yeah. Cool. I'll anyway put those in the show notes. Oh, but yeah, sure. uh, dude, thanks a lot for making the time. Thanks a lot for having me. 
great this conversation. Is, yeah. so, cool, dude. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> that was episode 16 for you guys. Did you find it fun? Did you laugh or smile as much as I did? Did you learn or uncover anything during the course of the show? If so, let me know in the comments below or over Instagram DMs. I'd love to hear your thoughts. By the way, we are now taking questions that we'll answer on the show. If you have any question related to personal growth, personal development, career, education or life in general, then I'd love to hear from you and it's something that either me or my guests or both of us could answer and help you guys out with. So what you can do is simply leave the question or drop the question rather over Instagram DMs or you know drop an email to the one that I'll, that I'll mention in the show notes below. And oh yeah, we have some exciting news and announcements for you guys. but you have to stick around for the next episode for that it's something that's huge for me personally and something huge for the show and a big big step up for us in general and i can't wait for you guys to experience it watch it and listen to it too so yeah so stick around for that and uh, i'll catch you guys in the next one cheers bye bye